Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Engineering Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here in this lesson, we're going to talk about a really, really important set of lessons, set of topics that revolve around the concept of the op amp, called the operational amplifier. So in this lesson, what I want to do, just to get started, is give you some motivation, give you some, some, some uh, reason to be excited about learning an op amp, because really it is one of the coolest things you'll learn uh, along your studies. And we're going to do a little bit of background, and then as we go through the lessons here, the lesson two and three and four and so forth, We'll dive into analyzing these guys to give you some practice with understanding how to analyze circuits that involve op amps. So the first thing is, why is it called an operational amplifier? Most of you guys have an idea of what the word amplifier means, so we'll talk about that in a second, but why is it called the operational amplifier? Okay. The word operational comes from the history of why this thing was invented. Basically, it was one of the first building blocks of analog computers before digital computers came about. And they're called operational because you can actually use these little, these little circuits, these op-amp circuits, to perform addition and sign change, reversing the sign of a signal. Scaling, which means to make the, the, the signal bigger or smaller. Uh, and you can also do more advanced mathematical things with them, like you can actually build an op-amp circuit to take the integral, the actual calculus integration of a function of time, also differentiation. So that's why the history of it is called an operational amplifier, because you can do addition and, and scaling and integration and things like this. Now, if you were to go to an electronic store and purchase an op amp, you would probably get something like, like this. It looks like a typical electronic component that you would see. This is called a, a DIP package, D-I-P, which is, just means dual inline package, right? Which means the pins are dual and they're, they're in line like this. Now, the most popular op amp that you're going to find, certainly there are hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of different types of op amps for different applications, but the most common one that you're gonna find, the one that you're gonna study in your in introductory classes like this, is called the 741 op amp. Usually has the, the prefix micro, I put a U here, but it's micro A, and that just means that it's a micro circuit fabrication. You gotta remember, this was invented decades ago. The first op amp was invented decades ago when micro circuit, integrated circuit, was a kind of a new thing. So it's usually called a micro amp or micro A uh, fabrication 741. Usually you just call it 741 op amp for short. It's the op amp you're going to learn in all introductory classes. Once you understand that one, then going and grabbing a different specialized op amp for a specialized application is going to just be a slight changing of some of the numbers, but the concepts will all be the same. Now, we're not going to go and study this part of the graphic right now, but I just wanted to throw it up on the screen to show you that each one of these pins, uh, here these pins, correspond to uh, a terminal inside. Now, the... Uh, the uh, uh, circuit symbol for an op amp is a triangle. So we have a triangle drawn in there. Basically you have some inputs and we're going to talk a whole lot about what those inputs are, but we send signals into the op amp on the input side on the left and the op amp performs some, you know, uh, we'll talk about it later, but some operations on it. And then we have an output signal and that output signal could be making it bigger, making it smaller, doing various things. Now there's a whole lot of details here. This circuit uh, symbol here is just a triangle, but in reality inside of this op amp is a bunch of transistors. So what we're going to do, since you haven't learned what a transistor is yet, is we're gonna study this op amp circuit from a black box point of view. In other words, we're gonna draw a box around here and we're gonna learn how to use these circuits without really knowing the details of what's going on inside. And I know that seems a little bit weird because up till now in all of your analysis, circuit analysis training, we have spent a lot of time mathematically deriving everything so that you really understand what's going on. And then here I tell you, oh, we have a black box. So sorry, you don't know what's going on inside of there. But the reality of it is there's a lot of really good reasons why we do it this way because you have to start somewhere and you're not going to learn transistors for, for quite a, a while. And you can build practical circuits without really understanding the details of the inside. Then later on when you get to diodes and transistors, you'll know how to build the circuit that's inside of this box and even more complicated circuits. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Let's go and, and take just a second before we close the lesson out to, to draw a few pictures to understand how we can use op amps. And then keep in mind as we move through the lessons, we'll be diving into to analysis of how we put these in our circuits and figure out what they're going to do. So follow me on and we'll do that right now. Now what we wanna do right now is just get a little motivation for understanding how we're gonna eventually use these guys in circuits. So I wanna just make sure you understand how, I listed them all, but I want you to understand how we can potentially use them. So let's do that now. The first big category that you have that you're going to basically use an op amp for is the concept of scaling. This is what you really think of when you think of the concept of an amplifier. An amplifier, most people think of making things louder, which is what scaling is. So 
to show that, let's just draw a couple of pictures here. So let's say we have some input signal. This is the input to the amplifier. And this uh, input might look like this. Now I know we haven't talked much about sinusoids, uh, depending on where you are in the class, but any, anyhow, you can think of this as a voltage that just goes up and down with time. It could be a representative of your voice. It could be representative of, of lots of different things. But also, you don't have to have AC, you know, alternating current signals going into this amplifier. It could be just a DC, you know, 5 volts or 6 volts or whatever going in there. But anyway, if you're going to scale this, then you're going to take this waveform and multiply it by some number to get some output. That's what scaling is. What we want when we scale something or when we amplify something, this is a function of time is we want to have a replica, an exact replica of this input signal. We just want it to be bigger or smaller. You could actually scale it the other direction and make it smaller. So uh, I'm probably not going to get this right, but let me draw a couple of dotted lines to kind of show you uh, what it might look like. And I think you could probably all kind of guess anyway, but let's just go ahead and do it and say the output, if this is the input, then the output might look something like this, a little bit bigger version of the input signal. Right? So I think I did that right. That's not exactly quite right, but you get the idea. So everywhere there's a peak, there's another peak here. Everywhere there's a valley, there's another valley here. It's a, an exact replica of the input, it's just bigger. Or if you made, uh, if you change the circuit to make the gain, we'll talk about the gain later, less than one, then you might take this and make a smaller version, a really teeny weeny version of itself. It's exact replica, but just a little bit smaller in amplitude. Okay? Second big thing that we can do is sign change. Right? It's exactly what it sounds like. If you uh, have something like this, then you might have an input, which might be something like this. Right? Now, we don't want to, in this case, make it bigger or smaller. Uh, we just want to change the sign of it. Right? So if you can kind of think of it this way, now I'm not going to draw these lines to line it all up, but you can kind of think of it as, in this case, I'm going to make it the same amplitude I'm just going to go out of phase with it. So in other words, everywhere where there's a positive voltage here, there's the exact, exact same voltage but negative. Here there's a negative voltage, so this is the exact voltage but positive, and so on. So everywhere that you have a voltage input to this amplifier, you're getting exactly the same thing, but you're changing the sign of it. So that's useful for a lot of different things. For instance, if you want to, to uh, subtract this from another signal, then you first should invert it, make it an inverted version, and then you can add it to the, to the signal. And that basically means you can subtract it. So you can perform subtraction with these op amps as well by first sign changing before doing the addition. Which brings me to our next guy. Uh, you might want to uh, add these guys together. So I'll call addition, like this. And so you might have a situation where you have, I'm going to have to draw this a little bit smaller, but you might have a small signal like this, right? And then you also might have a larger signal. And these don't have to line up. I'm just drawing it like that because it's easier to visualize. So you might want to add these guys together, literally add them. So what that means when you have addition going on is that every point in time, don't forget, this is a function of time right here. And this is a voltage over here on the left. So as time goes on, here is a value of the voltage here at this time, and here's the value of the voltage of the other signal that I'm adding to it. So in this case, maybe I have two microphones. This is microphone A, microphone B, and I want to add them together. So at this point in time, I'm going to add these guys, making a larger amplitude, and here I'm going to add these guys, making a larger amplitude in the negative direction. So the, the, the actual numbers aren't going to work here, but maybe I'll get something really tall, maybe something like this. And again, I'm not really lining this up properly because I'm freehanding it, but you can kind of see the point here. You're adding this to this and you're getting a negative. You're adding this to this, supposed to be adding up to this and so on. So you can do addition with op amps. And then the last case I'm going to just briefly touch on is the concept of uh, integrating. Uh, it's really fascinating that you actually can do a little bit of calculus with some of these uh, devices because, you know, people think of calculus as a complicated subject, but it turns out whenever we go through the derivation, we're going to go through the derivation later to show you why it works, that you can actually take an input signal to this guy and integrate it and then stick the integral of that function off on the output. So, for instance, you might have something like this on the input. right? Instead of a sine wave, I'll just make it easier and I'll draw it as a square pulse. So let's say you send that in to the amplifier, just literally a square uh, pulse like this. And then on the output, what do you think you're going to get if you're integrating this? So this is the output. 
Well, what's happening basically is the output voltage that's coming out of this amplifier here at any point in time is going to be the integral or the area under this function up to that point. So here, at this point in time, the output is going to be the integral of this area right here. And as we move along in time to this point, the integral is going to be the area of the shaded area to the left. And as we move over here, the integral is just going to be the shaded area up to the left, up to that point. So what you're going to get is, if you were to draw kind of a dotted line for reference here, you're going to get something like this, a straight line. Because as time marches on, you're adding up this part, then this part, then this part, then you keep adding up a constant addition as time goes on. That's why I drew it as a square pulse to make it easy to understand. The output is going to be a voltage that is basically the area under this curve up to that point in time. And I'm not going to draw it here, but you also can take derivatives with op amps so that you can get an output voltage that's proportional to the derivative of the input. So wherever the slope is highest, you're going to get a higher output. Wherever you reach a peak where the derivative is zero, you're, you're going to have a zero output. So you're literally taking the derivative, which is the slope. You're getting an output that's proportional to the slope of the original function uh, of time. So this was just a quick introduction to the concept of an op amp. We haven't done anything yet, obviously, but I wanted to get you some motivation so that you can kind of see why they're useful. And we're gonna go through and learn about all of these things. And we're gonna go through some math along the way, and I'm gonna warn you that it is gonna re really have a different flavor than the things that we've learned in the past. In the past, with node voltage, mesh current, and other things, you know, I've, I've taught you the math and it kind of obeys the laws of physics. Here, since we're studying a black box, you really don't know, you haven't learned what's happening inside of here. So we're going to teach you the terminal behavior. How do these pins basically work? And from that, we're going to be able to, to do the analysis, but it is going to have a slightly different flavor from what we've used in the past. The good news is, once you understand the rules, you'll quickly know how to construct a circuit that's going to give you a sign change. We'll quickly know how to construct a circuit that amplifies something or that adds two signals together or that integrates something. So we have some derivations along the way, but at the end of the day, you're going to come out of this set of lessons with some tools where you could actually go to the store and buy one of these things and build an amplifier, which is pretty cool. So that's what we're going to do in this set of lessons. I'm Jason, follow me on, and as we go through the series on op amps, we'll learn how to, to use them in electrical engineering step by step.